Hello and welcome to another episode of Steel First Supremacy, my new playlist for constructed and competitive related videos, as versus the Steel First Speak series that I've been running for the past few weeks, um, which is more sort of talking, gameplay talks and, and meta talks and just general talks. Um, but I've decided to split things now into Steel First Supremacy and Steel First Speaks. Um, to just delineate the two from like casual versus more debt building focused things. So, welcome. Uh, I am Stilfer, aka Finbar, London based flesh and blood player. Aiming to be somewhat competitive in this game. Had some success. Hopefully, I'll have some more when the Nationals come around, but we will see if we get that far. Um, I am on my lunch break today, which is good. Um, and I'm here to talk to you through um, essentially. First pass, obviously not my first pass. I have index built um, with Briar in um, already. But I want to talk um, about deck building in Tales of Aria, and I want to talk about Briar as an example of that because um, then I can call the deck Briar the Numbers, which I think is a good pun. So we're going to go with Briar as an example of deck building in Aria. Following on from my last video where we talked about the fuse mechanic and what was required to reliably create the fuse mechanic um, and have it work for you on an ongoing basis. Um, this is kind of a follow on to that where we talk about um, <clears throat> where we talk about basically how that works in actual deck building. And we'll kind of demonstrate the idea of why you don't have space for older cards if you want to run a deck that consistently fuses. Um, so, yeah, some background for just some of the things we're going to talk about in this video. We're going to talk about something called hyper, hyper, hyper geometric calculations. Um, that is basically understood as the amount of times that you will receive a specific sample within a population based on the number of successes in the population, right? And so I do statistics for work. I'm, a, I'm an analyst. Um, and one of the things that you're trying to figure out is, um, you know, how frequently something is when you do a survey you know, how that relates to the actual data. So, you know, if I have 10 people who all wear red hats in a hall full of 60 people, what are the odds of me, you know, if I take two of those people at random from the room, finding someone who has a red hat, in, right? And that, of course, applies to card games, and it always has in terms of the odds, you know, that I am going to basically draw a specific card that I need it. And and we've been using this in Flesh and Blood since the start of the game, you know. We're talking about playing Kano and you build a deck that has 30 blues in. Um, you know, how many cards are you sampling? You're sampling four cards per turn and the number of successes you want to see per sample. Um, and you can work out the probability of that happening, right? Um, and we'll, we'll dive into that a bit because that's kind of what this whole idea of deck building is based around, okay? So let's bring up that just to show you guys what we're talking about. This is a hypergeometric calculation. Um, my population size is 60, so 60 cards in a deck. I will have 30 successes, so 30 Earth cards, for example. I have a sample size of four, which is the four cards I draw every turn, and the number of successes that I want to see in a sample. Um, this is the probability that I'll see one in a sample, 0.25. Probability I'll see greater than one in a sample, remember this is exactly one, um, is not... Is, 70 is 70 percent and the probability probability i'll see great greater than or equal to one is 90 percent. so if i put in 30 earth cards the odds of me seeing an earth card in every hand is 95 percent, right and that's the kind of maths that this um episode is based on this calculator is fairly useful when you're working out these kind of things then we're going to go to briar the numbers right the I mean in named episode oh fabdb is updated let's just refresh that um so, Briar the Numbers, Briar the Numbers. I was pleased with that when I came up with it earlier today. Okay, so say we're building Briar the Numbers. Now, personally, I feel like Earth Briar cards are slightly better. So I'm going to type in Earth, and we're going to see all the Earth cards that come up. Now, what am I including in terms of Earth cards, right? Now, Animal Mount Heroic will go in. Earth Lord Surge will go in because it's really good. Um, and because I'm building a very strong... Um, earth themed deck obviously i'll chuck in the pulse of candle hold i'm going to include so tomorrow's i really like my elemental cards to be non-attack actions 
Um, and I'm going to put in Weave Earths because those are very good as well. And we'll see how far we get. So that is 22 Earth cards, okay? How many do I want for my hypergeometric calculation? 30 is a bit high because I don't actually need to see an Earth card in every hand. I just need to see at least one in most hands, right? So I think I'd be happy either reducing this to 20, 80% chance of drawing one or more in a hand, or 25, okay? So based on that, I just need to add in three more Earth cards because I feel like I've added in the good ones. And I kind of just have to decide what those other Earth cards are going to be. Could be more So Tomorrows. I'm really a fan of So, so Tomorrows. I really like Summerwood Shelter Red um, as a great card. Autumn's Touch is great because it blocks for three. Um, Break Ground is good as a, as a three for seven. But Gurgeoning is good because it's a two for six, which is actually very impactful in terms of like the cost curve of the deck. But I think just for the sake of it now, I'm going to include either Evergreen or Autumn's Touch. But I'm probably going to go with Autumn's Touch just because it blocks the three. So let's include that there. So now I have 25 Earth cards. So my Earth Fusion is almost guaranteed. Now, Lightning is going to be the secondary theme of this deck. So maybe we'll reduce that to 15. If I include 15 lightning cards, the probability of me getting one of them is almost 50%. The probability of me getting greater than one or equal to one is about 70%, which means I'm actually quite likely to pull up lightning in my deck. So I'm going to add in some red and blue ball lightnings. Those are very good. I'm going to add in red and blue electrifies because those are very good as well. And then I just have to find another three lightning cards that I want in my deck. Heaven's Claws is good because it's a blue that blocks for three. Um, Lightning Press is good, but it doesn't block, which puts me off it a little bit. Um, Shock Striker doesn't block, blocks for two, so I don't really want it. Weave Lightning is a solid option as well. So I might put in um, blue or red Weave Lightning, right, to finish off my, um, my Lightning side of the deck, right? So let's put in blue Weave Lightning. And now we're looking at 40 cards, 25 Earth, 15 Lightning, right? And then we can go into the actual fusion effects to try and decide what we actually want, starting with Earth, because, you know, obviously in this deck, we're going to run the Blossoming Spellblades. Um, how many blues have we got? We have 13 blues, so we probably need the blue Bramble Sparks as well. We might run the yellows as well. So that's my Earth fusion. Um, Entwine Earth. Could be the right decision. I've got a lot of Earth Fusion going on. Explosive Growth Red, maybe. Force of Nature is a good choice because it blocks for three. But we're rapidly coming up on what I've pegged as the main problem that Prism, uh, not Prism, that Briar actually has, right? Which is that we're putting in all these cards. I hit 40 cards just to putting in the amount of cards that are going to guarantee Fusion. And now I have to find. 15 fusion cards that are you know that are gonna do what i need them to do right so oh, i don't think i put some more shelter in i don't know where that's in here let's get rid of those um three six nine twelve fifteen eighteen twenty one twenty four okay that's fine yeah twenty four is fine so 24 Earth cards, and then 15 Lightning cards, and then you can fit in 21 other cards. So seven other cards, right? And those are the hard ones to choose, right? So you're basically, now you can include whatever Fusion cards you want, but it just becomes very difficult because obviously you've already committed so many of your cards to just getting to the point where these other cards are playable. You're not going to run Inspire Lightning because you're not going to guarantee Lightning Fuse every time. Rites of Lightning, however, is a one for four, which means even if you don't fuse, it's still quite useful. So then you're running a total of 15 Lightning cards to enable Lightning Fusion on two cards, which is a bit of a tall ask. Then the question, of course, is when you get into the question of is Lightning worth it? Well, Rites of Lightning is very good. Sorry, Ball Lightning is very good. Electrify is very good. So actually running these 12 lightning cards doesn't actually cost me that much. Um, even Weave Lightning doesn't cost me that much, which means that actually I'm just getting the potential benefit from Rites of Lightning 
and from Blossoming Spellblade at kind of like a free cost. But nothing is free because, you know, eventually the fact that you're spending resources on those slots is expensive enough, right? But I could add in something like Arcanic Shockwave. But then, of course, I'm not guaranteed to fuse Lightning every time because I'm only running 15, whereas I'm running Earth instead. So I probably wouldn't end up running something like Arcanic Shockwave. So then I've got this loose-based deck, 61 cards. Easy enough to tweak. We'll just take one card out that I don't think is good. Let's pick up something like a Bramble Spark. Mm. How many blues have I got? 33, 24. Okay, let's take out a, a Weave Lightning Yellow, right? Okay, so now we're, like, basically this is kind of what I'm talking about. We're at the second part of By the Numbers Briar, right? The first part of By the Numbers Briar is asking... How many Earth cards do I want in my deck? How many Lightning cards do I want in my deck? What is the hypergeometric calculation of drawing an Earth or a Lightning card, right? So I now have 24 Earth cards, which means that my odds of drawing at least one are close to 90%. I have 14 Lightning cards. My odds of drawing one are close to 70%, but I only have two cards that actually require Lightning to work. And Blossoming Spellblade and R Rites of Lightning can both be pitched later into the deck with Lightning cards to ensure that I'm likely to draw them together later on. So I can make that work and set that up for round two. I have 24 Earth cards, which means Channel Mount Heroic is actually looking pretty good right about now. And one thing you'll notice is that where possible, most of my Earth cards are in fact blues. Now we've done that part of By the Numbers, where we've worked out our ratios, really what comes next is looking at the other ratios that Brian needs to succeed, right? We want roughly 50-50 attack to non-attack actions but actually i think in briar that kind of needs to be 60 to kind of needs to be 60 percent to 50 percent have i achieved that goal no and i'm miles off and this is the problem so i've put in all the good earth cards i put in all the good lightning cards but i'm still miles away from my goal of actions and non-attack actions i have 42 non-attack actions in this deck and i have 18 attacks which is really really not enough if you only have 18 attacks you will very easily get um fatigued out however i will say that many of my non-attack actions will make those attacks bigger so it's not like i do need to drastically cut the ratio of non-attack actions to attack actions but i do definitely need to tweak things a bit. And this is when we go back to the drawing board and we say, okay, that means that I'm not going to play Weave Lightning. I'm going to put in three Heaven's Claw. I'm not going to play um, three Bramble Spark Blue. I'm going to pay two. I'm not going to play... Um... See, it's tempting to cut Force of Nature because it's not an attack. Uh, but you might cut Bramble Spark Yellow as a good card to just take out in order to get another attack in. Um, and that can be a Runeblade hard if I want it to be. You know, that can be a Runeblade fusion attack. So let's, what about an Earth fusion hard? So we could take out Bramble Spark Yellow for something else that gets plus two, like say Entwine Earth, right? And that's still maintaining that fusion of Earth ratios. Because I haven't taken out any Earth cards. I've taken out Fusion cards. And this is kind of how you tweak this deck, right? When we talk about building by the numbers, really everything has a certain assigned slot, which means that if you're replacing attack actions with non-attack actions, you have to replace non-attack actions... Sorry, you have to replace non-attack Earth cards with attack Earth cards. And you have to replace non-attack um lightning cards with attack lightning cards and that's how you tweak it to get to your perfect environment um because this this deck basically will start off every turn if it can by playing an electrify playing a so tomorrow playing another non-attack action if it can which is why it's fine to have 36 non-attack actions and 24 attack actions and then leading into a big non-attack a big attack action like a Blossoming Spellblade or an Entwine Earth or an Autumn's Touch, and then into a uh, Swing with the Sword, right? And that'll kind of be like your ideal turn, is that big swing with a sword. Now, it's important to say that 
when we're doing this video, I'm not saying that this is the best Briar or this is the best way to build Briar. There's lots of interesting Briar decks coming out. I have decks that are, we'll say, more experimental than this and cut these ratios. But we're kind of talking and playing around with the idea that I've talked about in my design video from last week, um, or sorry, from earlier this week, about how we view the fuse mechanic as a drawback in deck building because it creates this need to fill your deck with a lot of cards that we won't consider particularly good. A one for three that blocks for three with no text on it is not a good card in the fifth set of the game, right? Not when you've got Exude Confidences and Command and Conquers and you've got Meet and Greets that are one for fours and, and there's loads of other stuff. In blue, a one for three that blocks for three is actually not terrible, but it's not really like exciting or optimal. Um, you know, something like Weave Earth Blue that gives plus one or plus two is not exciting or optimal, but you do have to run a certain percentage of these cards in order to meet the goal, which is, you know, having those ratios, right? Those by the numbers ratios that we're talking about. And if you play this deck, you should find yourself consistently fusing every turn. You should find yourself fusing Earth and fusing Lightning um, when and as you need to, right? Especially Earth Fusion. You know, it should be very rare for you to draw an Earth card without a card to fusion it. It should be very rare for a card like Channel Mount Heroic to disappear, right? And you do have cards and ways to push damage. For example, you have... Ball lightnings, which get go again automatically. So if you go so tomorrow, ball lightning, swing with the sword, you know, that's a decent turn. It's not as good as if you got go again from something else, right? But, you know, a big turn like so tomorrow, ball lightning into, say, a weave earth, into a entwine earth, into a sword swing, which still only requires you to pitch a blue, um, is, a, is a good turn. And you can kind of line those up if you try. Okay, now... I think that's kind of illustrating my point of where we're getting to with this idea of Briar the Numbers, um, which I call this deck. And I'll, I'll put the link to it, though obviously I'm not, you know, have fun with this idea. And, like, the point about this sort of deck, right, and this kind of approach to deck building, is that you really do just meet all your criteria, and then you kind of sub out and replace your, your criteria so that you're always meeting the same thresholds of X numbers of Earth cards, things and some people might be tempted to say okay i don't need the electrify i don't need the rights of lightning i don't need the ball lightning let's just cut lightning from this together and you can do that and you can run you know no lightning and put in cards like cnc and stuff like that or you can choose to keep this hybrid going because you want to keep blossoming spellblade and some of these big threats um and just kind of like tweak things a little bit replace some attack actions with non-attack actions you might want to replace some of your say, Earth Law Surges or your Weave Earths with big Earth attack actions so you can always throw out a big hit. Um, you know, you might want to put in more Autumn's Touch because it blocks for three. You know, and there's lots of different ways you can do this sort of deck building with maintaining the ratios that you have and with keeping other options available. You might find you need more blues. But the point is that this kind of approach to deck building where you're looking at these different ratios, remember you can group by type, you can group by pitch, and you can group by cost. Um, and that really helps you figure out what you need in your deck. If you have a lot of two or three costs, then obviously you need to start pushing those blue numbers up, um, which is something that this current iteration of the deck might struggle with, actually. And you may find yourself thinking, I don't have enough arcane damage. So, okay, Bramble Spark needs to go back up to three. So let's cut out, um, you know, something that we don't need like something that doesn't fuse well or maybe we want to reduce the lightning cards by five because we're not really fusing all that often and then we can put in three bramble sparks because we know we're going to earth fuse now there's lots of different options available to there to you on this like kind of like by the numbers deck building design right um i think that's kind of what i wanted to get across here i think it's kind of an interesting way to looking at building the numbers in a set and obviously once you figure out how to guarantee the fuse and how to draw the fuse every turn by using these kind of calculators, you then can start playing with the numbers to get to a point where you're comfortable. Like, if you're comfortable drawing a fuse card almost every turn, then you can start cutting some earth cards and adding in other things that give you more flexibility. But that's kind of where the, you know, I, I don't want to sound like a broken record when I say things like this, but re repetition, practice, repetition, right? The only way to build a deck like Briar is to take this core, I think, of something by the numbers, either Earth or Lightning or a hybrid model, 
play it, play it, play it, take out a card. If it doesn't work, put it back in, play it, play it, play it, and then just start start making tweaks until you end up with that fine-tuned engine that works almost every time. And that's why I haven't put out like an official competitive deck list of Briar or any of the new heroes, because I honestly don't think anyone's found them yet. I think there are some good examples. I've seen the Wraith Times has put out some interesting decks. Um, I've tried some interesting ideas myself. But this is kind of a good starting point for everyone who's thinking, I might want to play Briar or I want, might want to play any of the new heroes in the new set as to how you start working out how much fuse you need to reach those goals. Because the same thing we just did with Briar, we can do with any of the other heroes, right? We can do it with Old Him. Let's bring up Old Him. Um, what do we call this deck? We'll call it Counted for Eternity. Ah, oh, it's too long. It's a shame. Let's just call it Counting for Eternity. My numbers puns today. Um, okay. So we do the same thing with Old Him, right? How many ice cards do we want to start off with? Because I think ice is the primary element for Ultim. So let's just go to ice and let's find out how many ice cards we want to start off with, right? Do we want Blizzard in the main deck? Maybe. We definitely want Channel Lake Frigid, um, just to such a good card. And because of Channel Lake Frigid, we probably want 25 ice cards to go with Channel Lake Frigid. So we could take Blizzard. That's a nice instant. We can take Chill to the Bone, sure. Um, I'm less I'm less fond of Chill to the Bone. Um, in Twine Ice, no. Exposed to the Elements, no. Frostfang, maybe. It's a decent threat, but I think that's probably a threat in red. Um, I think the Ice Quakes are where you really get your momentum in, um, in Ice, in Thing. And I think Polar Blast as well, especially in blue or yellow, is where you get your Ice in, in um, Old Him. Um, I do wonder about Weave Ice, maybe. Let's have a quick think about Weave Ice. Winter's Bite, maybe. Um, I, as you can tell, I've built a few less uh, Autumn decks than I've built Briar decks. So um, essentially, we're looking for 35 cards, right? Um, we could put in something like Winter's Grasp because it blocks for three. Um, so that might be good to have Winter's Grasp blue just because it blocks for three. Um, we could put in Frostfang Red, for example, as it's quite a strong attack. But I think most of the time we're going to be attacking with either the Hammer or with a um, with a Guardian attack. So we don't really want to have um, have that additional element there, right? So let's go in. We're going to search by pitch. That's what we want. We don't want too many Reds in Old Him. We just need to reduce this number down to 25, right? Which shouldn't take too long. Um, chill to the bone, not great. Mm, I like Icequake blue. I like Polar Blast blue. I'm not really a fan of Polar Blast red. Um, or Icequake. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of Polar Blast red. Um, though it is tempting to just run all three of them because I think they are really good. Um, are most of my attacks going to have dominate anyway? Who really knows? Let's take out the Weave Ice. Winter's Bite is such a good card because they either pitch or they discard, and it's like such a great control card. Though I do like making Frostbite tokens more than I like making people discard cards. Um, I think we cut Winter's Bite red, sure. Um, maybe we cut. I really hate all these cards that block for two. I will say that, right? I'm going to cut Weave Ice. And we're going to cut... Yeah, let's cut Winter's Bite, right? So we're just running mostly blues that we're going to play out, right? So that is 25 cards. So then we're good. Then we go into Earth and we do 15 cards from Earth. Um, primarily, I think we're going to lean into heavy attack actions here just to get some numbers on the board. Um, I really like Autumn's Touch just because it blocks for three. Um, break Ground, I'm less con less fond of. Earth Law Surge, I'm less fond of. Um, 
Entangle. No, that's not an Earth card anyway. Um, let's have a think. Okay, so that's nine Earth cards. We just need another six. So let's go for... So Tomorrow's, I think, are probably very good. Um, I really like So Tomorrow or Weave Earth, I think. But I think So Tomorrow might be a really good plan. Um, so w with Old Him, there's a lot of, like, cycling. Um, or Summerwood Shelter. I really like Summerwood Shelter, actually, because it pitches to... Yeah, maybe we put those in kind of more defensively. Okay, let's have a bit of a think, because we've got over our plan now. So say we're running... Not Summerwood Shelter Blue. Um, probably Yellow Summerwood Shelter, I think, maybe is the answer. Um, anyway, this doesn't need to be perfect. We're kind of just demonstrating a theory, right? So say I have Summerwood Shelters, Autumn's Touch. Uh, we won't go for So Tomorrow because I'll get the expensive cards back. Weaver Earth could be good. Um, that's 6, 9, um, 12, 15, 18, 21. So three of these have to come out. Love having the blues. Let's cut the blue Summerwood Shelter. And let's cut the yellow Autumn's Touch, right? So that gives me 9, 12, 15. Okay, so I should be at 40 cards. I am, which means I have now got 20 cards free for Guardian Elemental cards, right? Um, Awakening, I don't think I need. Um, Biting Gale... I will fuse this every turn, but I think you just pitch a card and block with something else. Um, so actually, let's just search for Ice Fusion, right? Because that's what we really want. Um, so we've got our Channel Lake Frigids. No problems there. Probably want Emerging Avalanches. I really like this card. Um, it gives them um, Frostbite tokens. Um, Endless Winter we can run because we're going to fuse it every time. Um, Flash Freeze is an interesting idea in this deck, uh, but I don't think we run that. I think we run Glacial Footsteps, uh, potentially in all the colors, because it's a really good, powerful attack, especially if you buff it. Um, we're probably going to include Oak and Old. Um, and Snow Under Reds I really like. Maybe Snow Under Blues. But you see how rapidly my deck is filling up, right, with cards, because I'm already at 70. And then are there any Earth Fusion cards I would like to run in? Um, no, Awakening I don't need. Um, Entwine Earth is tempting, just because it's a big, beefy attack, which I can maybe give Dominate. Mulch I'm not going to fuse. Um, you see, Entwine Earth is a two for six anyway, so, you know, and Turn Timber Red I think is probably the best shout. So, because it blocks as a two for six anyway. You could run red and blue turn timber, and you'd be fine. Okay, so I need to trim some cards down. I need to get us back down to 60, so we'll do that. Um, how do we do that? That's the question. So I've got plenty of red now. How many attack actions do I have? Quite a few. So we want less non-attack actions, so let's start cutting some stuff. Cut some yellows. Cut Glacial Footsteps yellow, because I'm just never going to want to pay for it. Cut the blue, because again, I'm just never going to want to pay for it. Um... Everything else is kind of okay here. Um, just need to cut seven more cards. And remember, I'm cutting from the fusion cards now rather than any of the other cards because the fusion cards are what I will use. Basically, they're the numbers that I can't cut now. Um, I can cut anything else as long as it fuses. Maybe I cut, because this has to hit, so I'll cut that. And then I'm down to 61. Then we'll just cut one of something and then we can leave this be um probably cut blue that's an ice card i'll probably cut i'm just gonna leave it at 61 my point is you can see what i mean so we're, we're again just building by the numbers um and that is creating a deck that should reliably be able to fuse ice every turn mathematically how that feels to play we'll have to see how it pans out but this should give you a good basis for how to approach deck building these new heroes if you are completely lost and if you want to go at things from a I definitely want to use the fusion. And again, as I said with, with Briar, this is a foundational idea. Once you're happy with how much you're fusing and what you're fusing, you might start to be like, well, I, I hate when Turn Timber shows up or I hate when Weave Earth shows up. 
and then you cut it and you replace it with something like Tear Asunder, right? Or or something like that. Um, which is an amazing card and probably should be in this deck. But it, again, it's not for the reasons that I've explained. But this is a, a way for you to sort of like, you know, um, get that I get that um, availability, right? Um, of of by the number. So I'm going to make these decks public. If you saw that deck list there quickly, you will have seen there's lots of decks in there. Plenty of them copied from other places, Wraith Times. Basically, if someone puts out a Briar deck, I think it looks good. I copy it, I play it for a few games and see how it looks. And that's a good way to like learn and try new deck ideas, is just constantly be trying out ideas from other people. So if you see your Briar deck in there, it means I have played it um, once or twice, maybe a few times, and I've thought it was all right or made some modifications to it of my own. Um, so that's where we land on this. Um, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, there's obviously lots of things to be done and explored in this state. And once we have some good deck lists that I have a bit of confidence in, or we start seeing CC tournaments, which actually have deck lists posted and deck lists winning, I will start to do commentary on those. But at the moment, I've heard a lot of people saying, I've no idea how to build these new heroes. I've no idea how to get fusion to work. And I really just wanted to provide something for those people that lets them, I guess, approach deck building from a very safe place um, with Aria, which is like, if you do it this way, you will fuse, right? You will definitely fuse. Is the payoff of fusing worth the way you have to build your deck to guarantee fusing every turn? Maybe not. Maybe it is. I think it's very early to say that. I will say that some of the effects we have in these decks are very powerful. You know, something like um, Blossoming Spellblade, if you can do it regularly, which I think you will with this deck, or Earth, or, or Bramble Spark, or Channel Mount Heroic, or Earth uh, Entwine Earth, or any of these cards. If you get those effects off regularly, you will be getting some powerful effects. So it may, in fact, be worth it in the end. But if you were confused about how to build Briar, how to build Old Him, and you could do the same thing for Lexi, but I'm running out of time on my lunch break today, um, you know, the answer is there for you, right? Um, the answer is there, you know, put in the, put in the, put in 20, 20 to 25 of the primary element, put in 15 to 20 of the secondary element, depending on whether it's secondary or both, and then fill the rest of your deck with 15 to 20 or 25 cards that fuse with your primary element, with your secondary element, and go with it from there. And you'll end up in a positive position. All right. Thanks a lot for this video. As always, if you liked this video, please do hit like and subscribe. I've been getting some really positive feedback recently from some of the videos I did where I'm doing a deeper analysis into the design of a set and what I think of the mechanics and things like that. And a bit more sort of, you know, and lots of positive feedback as well into my reviews of the bands and stuff. I love it. I love getting the positive feedback. So, you know, like and subscribe to the video. Let's me know I've done a good job. And of course, tell your friends about it if you thought it was cool and you think they should watch it as well. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.